I have, uh, you here, here. I have been given the first 10 minutes of this time. Uh, and uh, so I'm, going to, I'm not going to waste any time at all. I prepared a little slideshow. Where do you turn, how do you turn this thing on here? Is it working? <laughs> oh, yeah. There we go. Uh, notice that uh, FCS Ministries is described here as a family of ministries. Uh, there's some changes taking place in our ministry that uh, I'll, I'll tell you a little bit uh, about. Uh, uh, you'll hear a little more about it uh, in a few minutes. Uh, let me just tell you that FCS Ministries uh, is, uh, used to stand for Family Consultation Service, and then we added the Urban Ministry to it. Uh, it was an outgrowth of youth work that I started in about 40 years ago and with Youth for Christ. And uh, I started getting involved with kids uh, from the court, uh, realized that you had to be involved with their families if you're going to be effective, uh, went back to school to learn how to work with families, and then realized that you had to really work in the community and the environment that impacts on them every time they step out of the door if you're going to be really effective in that. And so gradually it grounded us in the community. I got fired from Youth for Christ uh, <laughs> and started, uh, started FCS Urban Ministries. Um, I had seen organizations start out uh, as a movement and soon become uh, very organized, standard operating procedures, hiring staff, uh, folks very concerned about uh, their own futures, and eventually becoming self-serving institutions, moving from serving others to serving themselves. I had seen that happen with a lot of organizations. And so when I set up our corporation, I met with a group of organizational experts, and I asked them to help us, help us set up an organization that would keep focus on serving and not becoming and not become a self-serving organization. They said, what you're asking us to do is institutionalize non-institutionalization. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't do that. It's the way of all flesh. It's a birth, maturity, death process. So the best we can do is help you slow down the process. And so they gave me three guidelines. <laughs> don't hire staff. Don't accumulate property and give as much as you can away. And so I said, well, if you don't hire staff, I said, how do you grow? They said, don't make growth a goal. Uh, be a facilitating mechanism for visionaries who just need a place to plug in, but don't become dependent on the organization. So two things happen when you hire staff. One is the, the subsequent levels of staff start to dilute the vision. And the other thing is they start to have their security tied up in preserving the organization. And so I said, don't hire staff. Give as much as you can away. Well, obviously, it's hard to run an organization that way. <laughs> but we tried our best to resist the process, and we're successful at that for a good while. Uh, but uh, it's a slippery slope. <coughs> and today, we're a full-blown organization going on the way to institutions. <laughs> we own property. We have staff. And so it was a good idea. Uh, Well, let me get back that up. Let's back that up here. Yeah, there we go. So what we have become is a rather strange organization. <coughs> kind of a messy organization. You don't see it's not very hierarchical. And uh, at the top, there is a board of directors that have to do with governance and support. Uh, but there's a whole series of programs that operate under, under the board's authority. Uh, chaplaincy, organizing, church, seniors. And, uh, uh, and then there are, across the top, uh, corporations, member corporations that have their own board, but the chairs of those boards are a part of the uh, uh, 
of the larger overarching board of directors. And then the way all the decisions are made internally in the organization is that the director of every program sits at the table at, of the director's council and wrestle with all the issues of uh, staff policies, of, uh, of uh, how much rates do we get, of uh, health coverage, of what kind of computer service support do we need, uh, those, all those internal issues, as well as coordinating the functions of all of those different ministries uh, so that there's some coordinated effort together and to keep them from fighting over the same funding sources. Uh, every one of those boxes, programs, has its own funding source. That means they have to go after, uh, they have to go after funds, uh, and we don't have a, a kind of a centralized fundraising uh, office. Uh, so it's it's a rather unusual way of doing business. The the the. Uh, the interesting thing about it is that it's vision driven. The board does not provide the vision. The staff, the called ones, the, the ones that are being supported by the organizational structure are the visionaries that come around the director's table and together they set the vision uh, of the organization. We've got a bunch of our staff here today. I'm going to ask Linda Langstra, who's been there uh, to see lots of changes. Linda. Uh, works in our senior program, and uh, I'll just ask her a, uh, a leading question. Uh, Linda, you're one of the, the programs. Uh, why did you not uh, incorporate your own, your own program? Why have you stayed in this, in this organization? Well, I find that following the call of God to work with the seniors in the inner city of Atlanta, uh, has been a, a creative thing that I've been able to be creative and follow that vision through staying with SES. And plus, I get the collaboration of the others and the support of the others, and we work together to impact the community. Is that it? Is that it? <laughs> that answers that question. <laughs> okay, are you under any pressure to grow your organization? No. I find that um, when a senior comes to me and says, you know, I want to learn to read better, I never was able to go past third grade, and uh, I'd like to get my GED. Then I can listen to God and, and bring resources to bear around our Senior Literacy Academy. And, and focus on that. But I don't have to follow Bob's lead in the way he <laughs> grows things. He, he can do it his way, and I can do it my way. So I've, I've appreciated that. So uh, that, that's about enough. Then, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there, there's a good bit of entrepreneurism, as you can imagine. It, it kind of fosters entrepreneurism, and I would describe uh, the organization as a, as a banyan tree, uh, you've seen those trees that they, uh, they send down aerial roots uh, and uh, uh, those roots connect with the soil and, uh, back that up there, right there we go. they connect with the soil and so uh, what you end up with is a, is a banyan grove of interconnected uh, limbs and foliage uh, that uh, have their own root system. They reach out and they take, uh, they put their uh, roots down in new soil, they draw nutrition from that new soil, and they keep on growing out. So in, uh, in the end, you have a banyan grove. And the advantage of that, at least to us, is that uh, unlike a, a strong, tall oak, which is certainly a beautiful tree, uh, one lightning strike uh, can, can take it out. Uh, a banyan grove, on the other hand, uh, if lightning strikes one place, it doesn't, it doesn't kill the rest. Uh, it gives a great deal of flexibility, too, as Linda was saying. She can go whatever direction she wants. It's more like a, uh, a group of fishing boats. 
and uh, they changed course.